first of all, um, as long as I've been watching college basketball, I'm still, I guess, fairly young in this business. That's uh, one of the better basketball teams I've ever seen. Um, now, where they end up as far as like winning national championship and things like that remains to be seen. But as far as like a collective group of talent, um, that's one of the better basketball teams I've ever seen. And you've got to get a lot of credit to Kyle because he's got a lot of individuals on there who expect to be really good players. And he's got those guys playing collectively as a group and as a unit and playing as a team. And that's really hard to do. And then on top of that, doing it in a limited amount of minutes. Um, so he's got those guys on the same page sharing the basketball and being really good collectively as a defensive unit. Um, as far as uh, for us, um, I thought we did some really good things there as far as like limiting some of their opportunities, what we wanted to do defensively. And then they're so good. I was just looking at the stats. It's an eight-point ball game with about 11.47 left in the second half. And it goes from an eight-point ball game to a 20-point ball game in a matter of three minutes. And it happened because of two reasons. It happened because, one, they're really, really good. Um, but, two, I thought our shot selection uh, became bad. I think when you're playing Kentucky, you got to make sure that you're getting multiple paint touches. If you drive the ball in there in a half-court setting, you're going to get your shot blocked. And a shot block is the same thing as a turnover and ignites their fast break. So I thought we did a poor job of staying the course of what we've been doing offensively. And once we stopped having success on the offensive end, we kind of went our own separate ways on the defensive end too. So. Um, the thing I reiterated to our team after the game is that no one has canceled their season. I stopped playing because they lost to Kentucky, to my knowledge. So, I mean, everybody has lost to Kentucky. we got to pick up the pieces and move on and get ready for the next game. How well, Rick, did you guys uh, limit your turnovers and hang in there on the boards with them, and still it's not enough? Yeah, well, I think, uh, I think they out-rebounded us by five. Um, and I think they're the number one rebounding team in the SEC. I don't know where they're ranked nationally. I think we're like fourth or fifth in the SEC in rebounding. So I thought we would do a pretty decent job battling on the boards. Um, so I wasn't as concerned about that. I wasn't as worried about the turnovers. But my turnovers I was concerned about was us taking bad or hurried shots and us taking shots at the rim that we had no chance of finishing because of their shot blocking presence. Demetrius Houston's giving you some good minutes lately. Do you see him kind of getting into the rotation and giving you some things? Well, the first thing about Demetrius Houston, and when you're playing a team like Kentucky, he has no fear factor. I mean, if you want to be successful in college basketball, you can't be afraid. You can't coach scared. Um, so he's got that. Now he's got the athletic ability to do some things at the rim. The next step for him to become a good basketball player is he's got to learn how to get a skill level for him. He's got to be a guy that can dribble with his left hand, shoot the basketball. But everybody can see his raw athleticism and his length and things like that. He could be a good player for us, but he's got to get a skill level. And he's a freshman, so the best thing that will happen for him is going from a freshman to a sophomore. He'll get bigger, stronger. He'll start to learn not to go removed on Devin Booker on screens so he can't shoot threes. Um, but uh, he's got a lot of talent. I think he's going to be a good player for us. Rick, what kind of luxury is it for them to have a guy like Lyles who maybe is a little overlooked compared to some of those other guys that are capable of doing some of the things he did for Well, I think it was two things that kind of hurt us against Lyles. I think when he was at the three spot, I think he kind of bullied our guys with his penetration. He's not a guy that's a fast switch guy that kind of blows by you. He's kind of a slow driver, but he uses his size and strength to get to the rim. And then when they put him at the four, it kind of opened up their offense. We were kind of not guarding their fours and fives. And then when they moved him to the four, it opened up their offense in the second half. So he's a really good basketball player. I used to be at Purdue. I think I saw him play when he was in the seventh grade, went to go see him play. And I said, that's a waste of time right there. He's not coming to Purdue. So, um, But uh, he's a really good basketball player. And like you said, he kind of gets overshadowed uh, by some of those other guys. How much has Oliver improved just within the last couple months? Yeah, he's, he's gotten to become a better basketball player. But the reason why he's getting better is because he plays hard. When, you, when you're a big man, the number one thing that you have to be able to do is you have to work hard. Because, like, we're not getting a finished product. You know, Kentucky or Kansas, something like that, will get a finished product as a post player. But, you know, we don't, we don't get a finished product. In order for him to become a finished product, he has to have a work ethic. And that's what Oliver Black has. He works really hard.
talked about the turnovers. You had to be happy, though. I think you only committed eight. I mean, just talk about that. How much a point of emphasis that was in practice leading up to this game? Well, I, I told him that's the reason we lost the last two ball games. I, I really do believe that. Now we had some injuries in those games. Obviously, IJ didn't play against Arkansas. And then Rockway has got hurt, and IJ was hurt against Ole Miss. But at the end of the day, I thought we lost those ball games against really good teams, Ole Miss and Arkansas, because we didn't take care of the basketball. So it was a point of emphasis for us. But the refreshing thing is, Kentucky's really, really good, but there's no gimmicks to them. They're going to play man-to-man -man defense, so you can kind of just prepare for your man offense and then go in and have some sort of success. But, like, like I said before, we emphasize taking bad shots and trying to finish at the rim against them in a half-court setting when the ball hasn't moved. It's the same thing as a turnover. Rick, what did you see in Lyles as a seventh grader that told you, don't, don't eat the <laughs> Well, I mean, at that point in time, I, I, he might have been in seventh or eighth grade, but he was already 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, and he could handle the basketball and shoot it and move and things like that. So, you know, we had went down that line, I think, with uh, Zeller. Zeller was a kid that we recruited for three or four years, and North Carolina came in at the end. He went to North Carolina. So, I mean, I said, I, I don't see us wasting our time by sitting on a kid for four or five years, and then all of a sudden he goes to one of the Blue Bloods. Can you talk about your preparation? Coach Cal said uh, you really took them out of every single thing that they wanted to do. We didn't take them out of every single thing. Because <laughs> they still won. Um, but, no, what I really think what happens is, like, we wanted to make sure that we took them out of some things. You can't, when you're a really good team like that, you got to give up something. So what we wanted to give up is we wanted to give up their bigs being able to make shots. And said, so if they beat us making shots from the perimeter with their bigs, so be it. But we wanted to make sure that we took away some of their interior presence. We didn't want the ball going into the paint, whether it be a post feed, whether it be a drive, or whether it be an offensive rebound. We said we got to make sure we take away their paint touches. And I thought we did a pretty decent job of that. We didn't do it in the second half, but I thought a lot of that was because of transition. It didn't happen because of half-court setting. It mostly happened because of what we were doing on the offensive end that led to transition. But when we took good shots and we had our defense set, I thought we did a pretty decent job. What's, what's the effect, Rick, on the other team when – Kentucky, it could be any of eight, nine, ten guys that pop up and play well in a particular game. Well, I mean, that's the part of them having so much talent. I mean, you can't focus in on one particular guy. You can talk about, hey, let's take away Booker's shots, but the result of taking away Booker's shots is opening up something for somebody else. And then the guy that really gets no credit for them at all, I think it's Tyler Eulis. I mean, he's a guy, when it's all said and done, when they're trying to win ball games and trying to do something effective, he's a guy that's either pressuring the other team's point guard or running the team. Is this performance kind of in line with the, the recent performance of the team? It's just Kentucky. Is, is that above everybody else? Or did, what did you think of the performance overall compared to maybe the last couple performances? It's, it's hard to measure at mm -hmm. this point in time because you're disappointed about the outcome and the disparity at the end of But, you know, like what happened is everybody will look at the final score and say, like, well, Kentucky had another easy game against Mississippi State. But for people that actually watch the game, they'll see it was a difficult ball game until that one stretch run. So, hey, that's I mean, it's perception. There's nothing we can do about that. But what I would have liked, I would have liked for us to play the whole time we played in that first 29 minutes and continue to play that in the last 11 minutes. Then you can say, hey, we did a good job. But I, it kind of got away from us in that last stretch there. What do you think happened in that stretch? I think they scored like 24 points in eight minutes. Well, we didn't take good shots. I mean, we got a shot blocked at the rim. We tried to do some individual things instead of moving the basketball. And then once that happened, we were chasing them down in transition. And then once we chased them down in transition and they got some easy buckets at the rim, then we kind of to kind of fray away from our defensive principles. And that happens. Guys got discouraged because they were doing some good things and now they don't do some good things on the offensive end, and then they get a couple dunks, and our guys, their kind of momentum and their enthusiasm start to go down on the defensive end. And, hey, they're kids. I mean, it's hard to continue to do the things you're supposed to do on the defensive end when you're not having success on the offensive end. What did you tell them the first, I think, two timeouts within 30 seconds? What was what was going on in the hospital? Well, the first time I called, the second time I called up, I mean, they called because they couldn't get right. the ball in. Um, but the first, I called that first time out because we were post, we were supposed to post the post trap on the first time, and we didn't get that done. 
And then the second time we came down on our first offensive set, we didn't run the first offensive set right. So I wanted to call a timeout and say, hey, fellas, like, this is not the things we're supposed to do. If you're not going to do what we're supposed to do, we got no chance of winning. So, like, hey, let's calm down. We know what we're supposed to be doing. Let's get those things done. And then finally, you know, Fred, I think it was Fred taking the ball. I called a timeout. But it was because our guys wasn't cutting hard trying to get the basketball. To me, it's ridiculous when a team is pressing and you've got 47 feet and you start at half court. You can't go from 47 feet and then you got all that strength, I mean, wideness too, and you can't get open. I mean, get open. One more question. Anybody? Were you disappointed at all that it, with the weather when it, it could have been a sellout and big rock is crowd instead, the snow and everything? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's disappointing, but you can't control the weather. I mean, I, I sent the message up to God, but I guess it was more concerned about Kentucky than it was about me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you.